Hi everyone! I left my desk messy quite purposely because um, last night I have been playing around a little bit. So the only thing I have done behind the scenes um, towards putting this or completing rather these this palette is just adding a few other colors. So let me just recap. First of all, if you haven't seen this part that I have filmed, um, then I will link it down in the description box for you to, to have a look first so it makes sense um, how I got to this stage. So what I've done uh, in that video essentially is just picked um, a few colors. So I went up to here and then these colors. So um, I then later added these two and that was it. Now I had about three spaces left and I basically thought that um, I will order a couple of colors and see what I want to include them in the palette or perhaps um, swap them around with a couple of these colors. I was quite happy with the color palette that I have going on here. Um, keeping in mind these were not included and these four. So these three and these uh, four at the bottom. So I like the color palette. Um, the only thing is this bit here was very moody and because it's a summer palette I just thought maybe it's a little bit too dark and I need something um, quite juicy. So what I've done is I ordered... Uh, these two colors, which is Daniel Smith Serpentine Genuine. And I have been thinking of this color for a while. And so finally I've ordered it. Then the Iridescent Aztec Gold, also by Daniel Smith. Now that's just like, when it comes out of the tube, it's literally like liquid gold. It is stunning. It's super opaque and beautiful. And... Um, Schminke's gold is not as obviously it's a different shade altogether but it's just I find it not as um, kind of it's hard to build it up to that consistency so I decided to swap this gold around with this color um, the other two that you see here I already had them in my um, collection but I forgot about them because I didn't swatch them out in my swatch book so that's why it's important to swatch all of your colors that you add to your collection um, so that you know exactly what you have because if you misplace those tubes and you haven't swatched them you won't be aware of them and then these final three ones they are all by mission gold and they're very affordable paints to purchase they're quite actually what i'd say cheap compared to other um artist grade um, watercolors so mission gold is a artist grade and so is schminke and so is um Daniel Smith. If you take uh, like a regular watercolor by Daniel Smith, you end up paying about nine or ten, um, maybe even up to twelve pounds, depending on the grade of the watercolor per fifteen milliliters. And for the Mission Gold, you end up paying uh, just over five pounds. So you can see you get the same amount of paint, but about half price and even less um, in some cases. So if you want to add color, instant color and brightness to your palette, I would highly recommend to add a few Mission Gold paints to it because first of all they are affordable second of all they're super vibrant and beautiful so i kind of wanted like a turquoise color and um i decided to try out this turquoise blue which is not really i don't know i had a color a slightly different tone in my mind um so i don't think i will be including that one and i will just keep the ultramarine turquoise um i think I will do that probably just because they're a little bit too close together for me to include two of them um, and then I ordered this um, uh, leaf green which is just such a juicy juicy color I find it so um, 
like it's just so beautiful to look at it is super bright but it's not like it's on the verge of being a neon color you know it's like it's bright but in nature sometimes you get little elements of this color tiny little bits in the flower or the leaf that are exactly this juicy juicy bright green color and i love this color and um it's like if you would compare it to the green gold by Daniel Smith, which is like my all time favorite green or one of the favorites, um, along with sub green. But um, I would say this is like the sexier version of the green gold, even though I love it so much. But it's just so fresh and, and gorgeous. Um, so that's that. And then I was left with a choice. To, to pick basically first of all I switched out all the colors here and then I decided okay I don't want this color uh, I don't think I want to include serpentine green because it's just a little bit you know kind of similar to here um, it for for the for this specific palette but it is a beautiful color then um, like I said I wanted to swap the gold with the Aztec and then I really like these two colors again um, adding quite a bit of brightness to this beautiful color scheme that I have here. So I wanted to make sure that I have colors that are warm and kind of earthy and um, sort of natural looking like all of these are. However, I wanted to also have some bright colors there as well so that I had... Um, if I wanted to, I had the opportunity to mix up some lovely bright colors. And so as it stands, I have got these two, which is spring green and cobalt blue violet. And then I have these two, which is lavender and um, leaf gold. So this is Daniel Smith lavender and mission gold leaf gold. And these are both by Daniel Smith as well. So they are beautiful bright addition to the color palette. Both greens and both purples. And they are so different to... Um, they're quite unique colors. So these are not the colors that you would find in a regular kind of palette when you buy it already filled. So that was the key for me. And then obviously... Um, another bright color is this one and then I have some pinks and reds here so once that was decided um, I then also decided to um, to have something a little bit different because most of these colors are quite transparent if not all um, lavender is is I think it, it's sort of a little bit semi-transparent but the rest is pretty pretty good um, so I decided to also add this pink um, it's called Shell Pink and it's also by Mission Gold. Now, it's a little bit opaque and I wanted to have that possibility to make a color, to mix a color um, with, with the opacity. And I will show you what I mean. I haven't uh, played around with this on a watercolor paper, but I did play around um, on my... Um, Tamoy River paper and here are some examples when I mixed this shell pink with um, so here are all these four uh, mixes with a variety of things so here is the transparent orange and uh, the quinacridone rose and quinacridone red both by white knights so these are the mixes that I come came up with and um, they looked very beautifully and kind of milky and um, if I wanted to, for example, have that variety, then I could definitely do it. Um, also keeping in mind, adding a very bright color to your palette might create some really interesting mixes. For example, um, if you mix them with any of those golds or those greens or even these moodier colors, it would be interesting to see how it affects it and what kind of mixture it would it would give you so that was um where i got to and then i started thinking okay so i want to take out one color out of of these now so do i genuine i completely forgot which is this one here and i checked it yesterday and i forgot that 
um, I actually paid 18, 1, 8, 18 pounds for this little 15 mil tube. So it's really expensive because it's a genuine color and this specific one is quite expensive. Um, so it's right here, it's beautiful. And I decided not to include it and kind of add it to like a speciality water color and keep it for some, you know, special occasions. So um, Payne's Gray, I decided then versus this one, I will keep. And um, I wanted to have this Mars Black because this one is sort of like a bluish gray and I wanted to have something which is a bit more true to black but I didn't want a solid black and the Mars black is very interesting because you can see it's a very uh, granulating color and I've done a video where I mixed it with a number of colors actually let me just get it now okay so here are the mixes so I've done a video on this you can go to the older videos and have a look so mixing this Mars black with phthalo green ultramarine finest cerulean blue hue Prussian blue indigo and dove blue created these beautiful mixes and that's the reason why it's called Mars black because it just looks like um like a planet texture it it's beautifully i mean it's like a picture taken from you know from from a satellite shot almost it's just stunning i don't know if you there we go so hopefully it can translate to the camera as well as as it does in real life so it's a really beautiful color and keeping in mind i only mixed it with a green and a few blues uh, i wonder what how this color would be if mixing with the other colors, you know, particularly with leaf green, uh, whether that will kind of mute it a little bit more or the other way around, whether that will kind of bring some juiciness and color into Mars Black, but create that uh, texture there. So super interesting to have this color in in your palette for texture. And obviously if, you, if you're planning to do loads of flower paintings, uh, texture like that, might be really interesting in in some of the floral illustrations all right so um then i decided to play around and just start kind of swatching the colors that i wanted to use and kind of um put them sort of in in a um in the right order so uh, it was I, I was certain that I wanted to include all of these colors which are exactly like they are here up to the red and then when it got to the quinacridon red which I absolutely love um, I then realized I also wanted to include um, the quinacridon rose because that's a color that obviously wasn't there so if you take it out it's kind of it's missed in this color palette so it works really well you do need a warm pink and a cool pink um i find um in the palette so then uh, obviously i added the shell pink into here and then we are continuing with the purples and this cobalt blue is a stunning color. I'm not too keen on purples, but I started really liking these two. So the lavender is quite milky and it has that pastel kind of look. And there are a lot of flowers in the nature uh, that have this color. Um, and then when it comes to this purple, it's stunning. Like I would really recommend for you to add it to your palette because it's a very special color. So cobalt blue violet is a color that um, separates. It's a beautiful um, granulating color that separates into these super um, bright blues, like kind of like um, ultramarine and some pinks and it's just the most stunning thing ever um very interesting so on its own it's very special but i can imagine in mixes it would be beautiful as well then i was quite certain i wanted to include the green gold the rich green gold 
as opposed to so there's the green gold by daniel smith and this is the rich green gold which is just a warmer version of that which i haven't used in a long time and it looked like the paint actually dried up inside so when i swatched it here i kind of thought i actually don't need it because it's so like borderline between these colors and here that it really didn't need to happen and i felt like i could mix something very similar to this color um using a couple of these you know so the nickel azo yellow perhaps with the green gold i think i would get there basically so decided against it and um then we're going getting into these greens and um that's when i decided to substitute that green the rich green gold with this beautiful spring green because you can see again it's missed in that palette it really adds kind of that juiciness and it's so different so after that it was very easy and i hope i'm sharing these stages and i hope it will help you to understand how i'm filling a palette so i'm starting somewhere and then slowly expanding it and adjusting a few things so that's when i then was certain how i wanted things to be and here are the colors in order all 20 of them and this is what I'm going to go with so I'm going to give you a quick um, run through so this one is Schmincke lemon yellow Daniel Smith nickel azo yellow Daniel Smith uh, quinacridone deep gold another Daniel Smith transparent red oxide this one is Schmincke transparent orange this one is Daniel Smith, uh, Paraline Scarlet, Stunning Red. I just absolutely adore it. All of the colors that I picked here are just gorgeous. They make me want to grab this palette when it's ready and go and paint. That's that's how um, exciting it can be to... If, if you actually feel a little bit uninspired, try updating your watercolor palette. Um, and then just fill, fill some colors, pick some colors... And it might actually um, reignite that passion for watercolor for you. Uh, then we have, um, this is the White Knights Quinacridon Red, White Knights Quinacridon Rose, Mission Gold Shell Pink, Daniel Smith Lavender, Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue Violet, Daniel Smith Ultramarine Turquoise, Daniel Smith spring green and nada no sorry this is mission leaf green and then we are continuing with daniel smith there is a majority of daniel smith in this palette so this is the green gold by daniel smith another daniel smith sap green then schminke perlin green this is daniel smith paints gray Schminke Mars Black and Daniel Smith Iridescent Aztec Gold for some lovely little accents. All right, so what I'm going to do now is the most exciting part, which is filling up the palette. And I, um, I will leave all of the links for all of these colors in case you've fallen in love with some of them and want to add them to your summer palette you're more than welcome to check those um, links the palette i will use today is this cheapy one and mine is the 20 um, color palette the one i have found is i believe 28 colors yeah i couldn't find the 20 on amazon um but 28 means you even have more more um, choices to make which is even more exciting but it's exactly the same palette the only thing is uh, it's got a few more colors um on on the sides here and then on one of the lids it it has also some colors on this side so that's how you get to 28 all right let's start filling this baby up
Okay, so I am halfway in. It is hugely satisfying to fill a palette. I mean, it's one of the most exciting um, things in watercoloring besides actually painting with it is, is creating a watercolor palette. So halfway in and I am putting quite a generous amount in these wells. I just, I don't want to have to have a little dot of, of paint because I don't want to run out. So I wouldn't quite say that this is a full half pan that's that one thing i wanted to say as well i will also bring with me this lemon yellow um tube um just one tube because this color goes so quickly it's a color that is like a workhorse so for mixing it goes really quickly and i don't want to end up um, running out of it and not have it so that's one color i will take with me so i will proceed now to the second half and i will just move these a little bit to the side and have a little gap between them so there is no confusion uh, another thing as well that i showed you or tried to show you was this green gold so um i mentioned this before i have little um drop left in this um tube and First of all, when I'm not certain about a color, I try to order it in a small one and that way it's quite, you know, it's not expensive and you decide whether you like it or not, provided the color you want is available in, in that tube, in a small tube. Um, so now that I know it's one of my favorite colors, I went uh, ahead and I bought a full 15 um, mil tube because I love it. So I will mix the two. I hope that's not going to be any like different uh, to anything but um, that's just to let you know why there are two tubes for that color okay let's continue Alright, so it's done now. The little tip I would give you um, is when you are unscrewing some of the tubes, do it on a side because sometimes it dries up the paint, uh, dries up around the neck of the tube and then you get these little uh, dried pieces. So you don't want to have that uh, fall into like a different color or something. So if you do that on the side, then you'll have everything nice and clean. Now, the consistency of every paint is different and some of them are quite liquid. As you can see, this one is the most liquid one, which is the Leaf Green um, by Mission Gold. And then they just are perfect to fill your palettes because they flatten out and they dry nicely and obviously working with them is easier then. There are some paints that are a lot harder and they will uh, not flatten out unless you use like a spatula or a little uh, needle to just kind of um, make it go in there really. So it's up to you how you do it, but make sure that you don't have any uh, pick picks uh, of watercolor sticking above uh, this because keeping in mind you'll have to be close you'll have to close this palette 
and you don't want to mess up anything. So what I would do just um, before I leave things to dry is um, go in there with a little tool of some sort and then just flatten things out. Um, the final thing to say is make sure you do this a little in advance before traveling because you obviously want your paints to dry and like I said some paints are um, drier than others so they will dry out faster some paints are a little bit sticky when they have honey in them for example they tend to uh, stay soft longer so you don't want to create any mess um, when traveling so do it in advance and make sure you put a nice kind of piece of paper or something um, before uh, you close the palette because they need to dry obviously and you don't want any dust settling on them so that is it really that's my palette I'm quite impressed that I didn't mess up the sequence of the colors because that would have annoyed me big time so that was all good I'll probably keep this little card here um, with the uh, as my swatch card um, I will see that should fit in there and that's it so um, I hope you enjoyed this it's definitely something I love doing and gets me excited and that is it so thanks for watching and see you soon